What's going on guys, Eli Koja here back with the new god in. Today is fire. We're going to go through the fire staffs. So we're going to talk about all the gear that goes with the fire staffs. We're going to talk about how each staff has its own unique playstyle and how it compare or cater to your playstyle. Let's get right into it, boys. Okay, starting off with your Q spells right here. The first spell is going to be Firebolt. Now, Firebolt does a massive amount of damage and it's on a one second cast time. Firebolt's pretty cool though, because check it out. So after you cast it on your enemy, it puts an ignite on the target that deals 14 damage over 4 seconds. Now this can be stacked up to 5 times. So, and if you get this stuff on 5 stacks and you just, you know, you know, keep your stacks up and, you know, like with any other weapon, if you can keep your stacks up, this does just disgusting amounts of damage. Now this is, um, probably one of the strongest points of fire. Now I know there's, fire has tons of utility and, and tons of different things, but I think that fire has the highest damage Q in the game now yeah there's some weapons that have a higher initial damage like you know um but fire has the highest overall just damage per second on the cues it's disgusting the next ability on here is going to be called burning field now, this ability is really strong actually uh it's a target ability that you can put on the ground wherever you want it has a 0.5 second cast time and it uh, deals just massive amounts of damage to all enemies inside a three meteor radius um, I, I underestimated this, but after playing with it, it's actually extremely strong. It's a really nice AOE, um, target ability to put on the ground, and it does a lot of damage. Don't underestimate it. Okay, so the first ability in the W section here is going to be Ignite. Now, this is going to be the first one you unlock. Ignite is really strong. It's a really strong single target ability. So what it is, it's an instant cast that you put on a target, and it deals a really nice chunk of damage. But after it does that, they take a really nice dot for four seconds after it's on them. So they have that initial damage, and then a really nice four second dot of a dot, a four second dot of just burst damage. It's a really good way to burst down a single target. Okay, so the next ability is like the super strong defensive ability for fire. It's called Wall of Flames. All of us, just everybody just calls it fire, Firewall. <laughs> but it's called Wall of Flames. Now, you can put this wherever you want. Now, it it, it um, it's a it's a skill shot and it's an instant skill shot and you can cast it in any kind of direction that you, that you would like to cast it but what it does is um it interrupts casting um enemies can't go through it and if a uh, mobs touch it or whatever they're, they're not bounce back it basically just separates you and your target and if they try to come to you without any kind of displacement or anything or any kind of like dodge roll or something like that they're going to take uh quite a bit of damage so it allows you to separate yourself from the enemies you can use this either in defensively or offensively to, to apply pressure it's a very 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 strong utility ability all right, so the next ability is called Fire Wave. This is a pretty cool ability. It's a, it's a AOE cone in front of you and it's an instant cast and it ignites all the enemies that it hits and affects the enemies and they suffer a nice little uh, damage. Um, it's a nice little tick damage per second, but the cool thing is it knocks the enemy back and it also interrupts casting. So this is your this is your nice interrupt here. It's like a nice little just cone in front of you. Nice interrupt, uh, good to go, strong ability. Okay, so this is the last ability that you open up in your uh, W tree. It's called Fireball. This is actually super pretty cool. Super pretty cool. Is that a thing? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a thing. So basically, it's going to be a little bit more than a, it's a 0.6 second cast time. And then you throw it in, in the direction that you uh, cast it into. <laughs> I know it sounds stupid. But so after you cast it in the direction that you, that you want it to uh, go, it does a nice damage, like a really nice, just fat chunk of damage on them. But here's the cool thing after that. Um, it hits an it's a AOE. So when it hits the enemies on impact everybody that's in a five meteor radius of the initial impact is hit with that nice chunk of damage And then it puts a burn on them that they have an additional burn Just a small tick burn like not a high damage But I mean it's it's enough damage and it's a six second burn So that's really strong in a five meteor radius and really put some AOE pressure on somebody and this is a really cool ball ball <laughs> Really cool spell and it's called fireball. Come on now All right, so the first step we're going to talk about as far as E's go, um, your, your special ability on each weapon is going to be the main fire staff. This is the fire staff that you have that you're leveling up when you first start playing fire. Now this ability is called Pyroblast. Now it is a pretty long cast time. It's a two second cast time. But once you get it off, it's just a devastating amount of damage that hits the target. And after it hits the target, like 
a lot of fire um, abilities. It puts a burn on them, a four second burn, a really high tick damage of four seconds burn afterwards. So after that initial just big bang, you have a nice little four seconds of applied pressure to them. Uh, this is a really strong ability. Also, um, since it has a really long cast time, it's really strong if you pair it with your passive here with the aggressive caster passive, because every four active spells you get a uh, a casting speed buff. So basically, you want to be able to get, you want to get your cast speed buff first, and then hit them with the power blast, and you basically it's an instant power blast instead of having to sit there that long two second cast time. It's just like a whoop, there it is, boom, just disgusting damage, nice little burn, applied pressure. So make sure you try to if you can make sure you have your aggressive caster up when you cast this. Okay, so the next non-artifact weapon we're going to talk about is the two-handed version of basically the Fire Seven Star, but it's called the Great Fire. Now, this staff is really, really, really strong. It's got a really nice rework to it, and I do believe it's going to have a really strong presence in the game going forward. So the ability is called Flame Pillar. Now, after a short, uh, it's a target ability, and it's an instant. So after, um, so it's an instant target ability that you put wherever you want, and after a short delay, very short delay, it explodes on the ground it's a, it's, a, it's a small it's a small radius though i'd say it's about three to five three meter radius uh it doesn't say how big the radius is but it looks about three meters and it does a really nice chunk of just aoe damage instant damage to all targets now it doesn't put a burn on them or anything after that but there's a reason why it doesn't do that check this out this ability is on a 10 second cooldown that's nuts this is a massive this is a lot of damage on a short cooldown and if you have a pork omelet or something like that it's pretty much it's an eight second cooldown so every eight seconds you can apply a nice just fat instant aoe pressure it's really 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 strong and i advise everybody to check it out uh great fire is probably one of my favorite fire staffs definitely just because of uh the, of the low cooldown and you can get three of these off before you can do a blazing or even like a brimstone i mean those are all really high damage abilities but uh this is a really strong weapon and i advise you to check it out okay so the next two-handed non-artifact weapon is called the infernal staff and the infernal staff i think is one of the strong of uh, just a very strong pvp weapon the ability is called contagious fire so um it's a 1.2 second cast time and you put it on a target now after you put this ability on a target it's going to have this like um aoe pulse around them that um it does damage to them obviously but anybody that comes in contact with them close to them it does damage to them too and this is a lot a lot of damage a lot of damage now a lot of people use this to be able to apply pressure now you so you can apply pressure to like when you're in a pvp fight like let, let's say you're not doing gvg or something like that because this is a very strong gvg weapon let's say you're doing random dungeons and you you get dove by a team or something or you're diving whatever you put this on a clothy or somebody that's being aggressive or i mean anything like that and they have to get themselves out of the fight now you just did one thing yeah you're applying a lot of pressure to them and doing a lot of damage but you took them out of the fight and that's extremely strong now if you can do this to a tank or if you can even get this on a healer and separate the healer from his group as so why your team can actually single single uh single people out and allow them to, to get kills this is a very strong uh, weapon and i do when people ask me about fire and they're asking like what weapons should i try out and all that stuff like that i always tell them to go with the infernal staff first and get some nice levels in it because eventually they are going to get into pvp and this is a really strong weapon and it makes them feel confident in their playstyle and in the actual fire tree so this next ability is a one-handed fire staff it's a artifact weapon it's called the wildfire staff um the staff is kind of underwhelming but it looks really cool <laughs> it's basically what the magma sphere does is you say it's a cast it's a one second cast time and it's you, you put it in the target location and after you cast it it just throws this big ball of fire at them and enemy and it does a lot of damage actually so uh it's very easy to get out of the way of but if you can't get out of the way of it it does a lot of damage kind of like how the frost has you know the ball coming at you and it freezes you but this is the opposite it hits you and does a lot of damage and then it puts a burn on you for four seconds and this damage cannot be reflected that's pretty cool um but like i said it's just an aoe just fireball just rolling down just doing work a lot of damage and a nice little burn afterwards okay so the next ability here is the brimstone now this is probably the strongest zvz uh fire staff because it is just disgusting so it's called meteor now what a meteor is is a target location pretty long cast time it's a two second cast time but it is on a 30 second cooldown so that's not too bad that's a two second cast time and then on impact it deals just devastating amount of i mean like massive amounts of damage and then it knocks all enemies back a little bit and then um interrupts and whatever like that and this damage cannot be reflected also that's really good for it to be strong for pvp it can't be reflected but i've just seen like 
if, if you know anything about fire staffs, you're looking into fire staffs, and you see a lot of people playing brimstone. It is an artifact weapon, so that's kind of cool. Um, that you can, it has a high item power. Devastating boys, like this meteor hit. If you have nice specs in it, like you can almost one shot like a whole group of people. So never underestimate this. Uh, if whenever I see a, a brimstone coming down in PvP, um, all of us, everybody initially just like get the heck out of there because you know. You don't know how hard it's going to hit you. You know what's going to hit you hard, but you don't, you don't know what kind of specs they have. So if they have really good specs, it could potentially one-shot you. Uh, it's a disgusting, disgusting thing, a weapon, and I'm glad it's in the game because, it, like I said, it's a long cast time, and you can avoid it, but if you can't get out of it, a lot of damage, boys. Okay, so the next um, is going to be called the Blazing Staff. Now, the Blazing Staff is one of the coolest looking fire staffs in the game. Like, just actually, the staff itself looks really cool, and the animation is really cool. It's called Flame Tornado, and that's exactly what it is. You, uh, it's a target ability, and it's on a one-second um, cast time. It is on a forty-second cool, forty-five-second cooldown. But this this weapon was really OP when it first came out, and it got a nice little nerf and put it in like a put it put it in its place. Uh, still, it was a pretty long cast. I mean, pretty long um, cooldown though. Anyway, but Flame torta Tornado. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that in there. <laughs> so anyway, flame tornado. You put it in wherever you want, and um, it just puts this fire tornado that just burns, burns, and burns. And a five meter radius just does a lot of damage. It does a lot of damage to mobs, and does really cool, quite, quite a bit, a lot of damage to players too. But it's pretty cool because after it's done, it leaves a nice little burn that will continue to burn on all targets uh, for for three more ticks. So after you're done, you still get three ticks of that damage on the targets. That's a nice little. That's, that's why I don't mind it being that big of a cooldown because even if they do get out of there, they still got a nice three tick burn out of it. Um, this is predominantly a PvE weapon now. It's very strong in random dungeons, very strong. And in small scale uh, PvP and like little chokes and stuff like that, it's really strong. Okay, so with gear, the cool thing about all the gear is um, all the mage, basically staffs, they kind of share the same gear. It's kind of cool because... Um, Fire Frost, you know, even Curse, you guys can just put on basically the same gear and then you can just, you know, try different weapons. I'm fire today. It wasn't that much fun. Boom, now I'm Frost. Whatever. We're going to go all over. We're going to go through all the um, helmets and then I'll go through the chest and then the boots. I'm going to, um, this is a really easy pick right here. It's not artifact. Very easy to level up. Very easy to make and buy. Uh, energy field is pretty cool. Um, you have a, you pop it, you get a nice resistance, nice little defensive. Anytime you take damage, you get mana back. This is a very mana heavy uh, class, so anything that can help you get mana back, perfect. Boom. Okay, so the counterpart to that is called a Royal Cow. Royal Cow is super strong. Um, basically, it's on a 30 second cooldown, but it lasts for 15 seconds, so it's basically 15 second cooldown. Every time you pop it, um, you for the next 15 seconds, you do you cost no mana, like energy, like nothing. You I know I say energy, energy and mana, energy. Um, <laughs> basically, <laughs> all right. I'm sorry, boys. Anyway, so basically, whenever you uh, cast this on yourself, you can just cast as many abilities as you want, free casting with no energy cost. Super, super, super strong. Like I said, mana, mana heavy class. This is a really strong thing. All right, another one you can go with. This is more for just strictly PvP and a little bit of PvE. Um, it's called Displacement Immunity. Basic immunity. <laughs> basically, when you cast this on yourself and five allies, you basically can free cast for, you know, uh, up to six seconds. You can't be feared, knocked back, and all that kind of stuff. So you can get all those casts. That you can pump out as much damage as you can before you don't have to worry about worrying about being interrupted and stuff like that. It's more of a PvP focused, but you can use it for certain... Um, random dungeon bosses that do knockbacks and stuff like that you can basically make it to where like you don't get knocked back okay, the next weapon is going to be the scholar robe um definitely back to that whole budget build right there um scholar robe is a non-artifact it's easy to level up easy to use um it has a and the cool thing about this it has an ability called speed caster now speed caster allows you to whenever you pop it on yourself every 40 seconds you uh, have a massive amount of a uh, boost to your casting ability abilities and you also have a reduced energy so for 70 percent for eight seconds you can just cast super 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 fast pump out tons of damage and your energy um cost is reduced as well like i said with this being a mana hungry build this is extremely strong and a nice budget for this is not an artifact all right so moving on to the next one here this is going to be a artifact weapon it's called the druid robe kind of the most um definitely the highest ability to give out the most damage on a, this is called obsessive burst it's on a one minute cooldown and basically what obsessive burst does is um, anytime after you pop it you cast an ability for every ability that you cast your damage is increased by seven percent and this buff lasts for seven seconds you pop this you pop your helmet you pop your boots pop you know a couple cues 
maybe a W, boom, hit them with the E. If, if you get up to eight, it stacks eight times, if you can get it to eight stacks with the E, disgusting amount of damage. This is a this is a turret. Like if you want to be a turret, this is it right here. Now don't don't get me wrong though. Even though this is extremely strong, the um the scholar being on a 40 second cooldown and extremely fast casting that is also strong. Both of these are very strong just because it, um with this being a artifact, you have to get a little bit more high high item power but uh don't underestimate the uh budget build there boys okay now i'm just gonna do some honorable mentions here for the chest uh scholar robe disgusting um you pretty much can't be killed and plus it looks the best i mean like look how gangster it looks it just looks so cool um also royal robe is really nice you put this down on the ground this is strictly strictly pve put it on the ground and you and all your allies inside of it get a um attack speed bonus you get like a damage bonus and a healing bonus it's really 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 strong for pve okay guys moving on to boots um scholar sandals is the first one here on the uh their cloth shoe and you have a thing called uh focused run now focused run it's pretty cool because um when you're running you get mana back which is like it's just song so i get, by this time i guess you guys can obviously see that all of our gear we're, we're playing around the class like we're trying to provide ourselves with as much mana sustainability as we can that way we can provide as much damage as we can um Anyway, so focused run is really cool because once you're once you're in that focused run, you can, you're immune to movement impairing effects for five seconds. What's the run is called five seconds, and uh, you can't be like you know you can't be rooted and stuff like that. It's super cool. So like on, it's a really good defensive, and it's um, just really strong for uh, PvP and PVE. It's a really strong ability, and it's also on that nice budget. The next one here is gonna be uh, my personal favorite for a PvP like environment, like more of like a um, like GVGs and stuff like that. Uh, the cleric sandals cleric sandals has got a, a blink right here it's on um this blink is uh i believe it's nine meters uh, me and sober ever talked about it this is a nine meter meteor blink and it's an instant blink which is pretty cool but the mage sandals is also another ability that you can use it has a blink and i think it's a 13 or 14 meter blink which is a really long blink but it's delayed so just kind of figure out which one you want to do with boys uh this is an instant blink mage sandals is a delayed blink if you're looking for a blink and you're it, honestly if you're going to be playing gvgs you're going to have to have one of these two sandals so find out which one you want to play with the best and go from there uh nice little bonus here um on the next boots here this is more for a pv strictly pvp like um zvz's this right here called battle frenzy is super cool these are the grave guard boots they're an artifact plate boot and then um basically whenever you pop this your movement speed is increased by like 80 percent which is cool but you're immune to all impairing things like you can't be stunned rooted knocked back all that kind of stuff it's super cool it's a nice little get the heck out of dodge kind of ability just like the scholar boots are um this one's a little bit a little bit more stronger just a tiny bit all right so on screen here real fast go over a uh, quick recap the, the budget full scholar boys full scholar is just disgusting um for this class it gives you a lot of it gives you a lot of um abilities to make sure that you can have mana you can cast your abilities really fast and you can get out of bad situations um that is kind of the best ability there that's kind of the best setup for budget if you're going for high 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 damage not budget scholar is still there for you man i can i i stand by scholar scholar's setup is really strong but if you're going for that super just like disgusting gvg build um <clears throat> you can go obsessive burst on the druid you know you can go the royal cow and then have blink you can also mix matches anyway you boys boys you can take that out if that's too expensive and honestly this right here on screen right here is kind of my favorite setup for, for for fire uh because you have the um the royal cow so you can cast as much as you want then of course you have the speed caster and then you have the uh forced boots my kind of favorite setup for but I, I do a lot of more pve with this and then as pvp comes i do the pvp fights okay talk real fast about um off hands real fast because i know some of these weapons here have off hands um i pretty much just go straight with the book the book is the best offhand i think for fire um you can do tons of different things you can do like um gives you max energy energy recovery and a cast down modifier super 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 strong if you want to be a little more tanky use, use a tap root uh, last thing capes uh, morgana cape is the best for here because you're very you're very uh, cast you know you're very like cast heavy build and you also have want to be able to pump as much damage as you can right here the mark of the raven whenever you cast an e which you know all your big damage is coming from your e uh, well you know i'm um, basically but after you cast your e you can just spam out some cues real fast that increases your auto attack speed and uh increase your auto attack and your cast speed by 50 percent eight seconds extremely strong so it's really strong if you're out in the open world uh doing random dungeons i do recommend using the undead cape the undead cape is i feel like the best for open world because um if you get down to the point where you're gonna die you go invisible and you can still do damage and stuff like that and also can save your life 
Okay, boys, thank you so much for hanging out and checking out the fire guide. I know it uh, took me two extra days and I said I was going to put it out, but um, uh, I was just too busy streaming and stuff like that. But I, I got it out within the, the almost the time frame I said I was. Um, this is the fire guide. Uh, we are doing spears next. So the next couple of days we'll have spears coming up. Also, after this guide is released, um, you know how I do interviews now with my guides, but I did an interview with So Rab about fire. And the interview was so long because he did uh, it was a very vast amount of knowledge. I'm going to make that a separate video that you guys can have. Just a full video of just vast knowledge about fire. Alright guys, this is uh, my my outlook on fire. Hope this helps you guys out. If you have any questions or anything like that, hit me up down in the comments below. Also, come over to my dis uh, my Discord. Yeah, absolutely, my Discord, of course, if you want to. And then come on over to Twitch and ask me any live questions you want. This is fire. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the love this week. It's been tremendous. Like, my Twitch is blowing up. And I, and I can't thank you guys enough. So come on over there and join and be a part of the best community on Albion. Like, actually, every Twitch streamer has the best community on Albion. We're all just one big community. Alright guys, thank you guys so much for all the love. See you until next time. Peace.